Good morning. Everybody took up all my time. So you get the you get the short the short version. But still good. Still good, right? Bad. Oh nice. Perfect. My family's here. Everybody turn around, wave to my beautiful wife and two kids. Say hi. Little one, come here. Come here. Yay. Ah. So this is Zemi. Say hi. Hi. <laughs> yeah. So she has been uh, at the preschool now f- since August. And one of the things that we like to do at night is they, we sit down and we read from the children's Bible and then, then we pray. And then one night she goes, I want to pray like how we do in school. She might be shy. Can you do it? How do you pray in school? Can you say it? Say it. Come on. Do it. Don't be shy. <laughs> but they do the Lord's Prayer as it's going. She memorized it. And she will say it every once in a while at night. And I'll ask her, how do you want to pray? Do you want daddy to pray? Do you want to pray? Do you want to pray like how you do in school? And so sometimes she'll say, I want to pray like how we do in school. Or I want to... I want you to pray, and then so then we'll pray. Yeah, mm-hmm. is that how it is? Okay, love you. Here you go. But anyway, I share that. <laughs> yeah, you can give her a hand. So I share that because uh, what I want to talk about this this morning is comes from Proverbs twenty seven seventeen. Iron sharpens iron, and one man as one man sharpens another. And I see the school sharpening my kid in the ways of the Lord and how I do my best to do the same thing for, for them as well. And not only that, but now I'm finding that as I'm doing that with her and she's coming back and saying, I want to pray like how I do in school. Or I tell her, can you pray for my hand? And she goes, she lays her hand on it and she goes, Dear Jesus, heal daddy's hand in Jesus' name. Amen. And she just does that. I didn't even lead her or anything, but she's doing that. And it's been just an amazing faith-building experience for myself personally, coming from my three-year-old daughter. Isn't that amazing? So it, it doesn't matter how old you are, how young you are, as long as you're following God and you're going after him, that there is a hardening process in our lives, a refining process that happens in our lives, and we get to become sharper and sharper and sharper. Amen? And as we come together and as we rub shoulders with other believers, people who are following after the Lord, we become sharper as well. Right? Yeah? Can you throw up uh, the, the sandpaper grits? I like knives. I like sharpening things. You you cannot, can you even read that? There's a whole bunch of numbers on there, okay? But it goes from the extra coarse all the way to ultra fine. And so the grit is the, the, how coarse or smooth the sandpaper is. And so when you have these coarse, really coarse sandpapers, it's used for just reshaping things and shaping things to what, what you want it to be like. And then as you continue down and you increase in the grit or increase in smoothness, then it becomes something more refined and it becomes more polishing. Yeah? And so in our lives, we will encounter people, we will encounter people that are going to fall somewhere in this spectrum in our lives. Amen? When we first come to know God, that person who invited us to church or shared the gospel with us, that's like, that's like the extra course person in our lives because that does a big, big change in us, yeah? Where we come to know his goodness, when we come to know his faithfulness, our lives begin to change in a very dramatic way, yeah? Anybody experience that? I experienced that. And as we get to know God more and more and more and people begin to teach us and encourage us and rub shoulders with us, those, it becomes finer and finer 
to where we're being polished and we're being refined. Yeah? And then there's sometimes in our lives where there's just life punches us in the face and just chips us. And now we got this huge hole on our, the blade of our life. We got this hole. And then we need somebody who's going to come in and he's, who's going to reshape us, who's going to be able to share truth with us and encourage us to reprofile our edge, to reshape us back to where it was supposed to be. And those processes are not fun all the time. Amen? <laughs> not fun all the time. And so when we're looking at relationships and friendships in our lives, there are three areas that, that we want to look at. And this comes from Proverbs. The three, these three areas that we really want to focus in and hone in on are that your close friends are going to shape your character, but on the slide it says the company that you keep equals character. So company equals character. Repeat that. Company equals character. The company that you keep or the people that you have around you in your life is going to shape your character whether you like it or not. Whether you like it or not, it's going to have an effect on you. The second one is that true friends are sticky. I don't know what it says. Sticky friends. True friends stay by your side. Thick and thin, blood, sweat, tears, joy, laughter, all of it. True friends will stick by you no matter what the situation is. And they're not afraid to get dirty with you. They're not afraid to get down in there, to sit down in the dirt with you, and to cry with you, and to rejoice with you. They're not afraid to do that. The third thing is that true friends tell the truth even if it hurts. They tell you the truth even when it hurts. Go back to that reprofiling state in our lives when life sucker punches us and we got a chip and we need somebody to tell us the truth that is going to help us to get back to where God is calling us. Amen? Those three areas. So the first one, that close friends shape your character. We want to pro- prioritize. And this is not saying that we cut everybody else out, but we want to be selective and, be, and prioritize people in our lives that can speak into us. Okay, I think that's the, that the, that's the biggest thing, is that we prioritize the people in our lives that can speak into us. So if you just let any Joe Smo influence you, then that's a bad thing, okay? Because then you got weirdos on TikTok and Instagram influencing you, where you're basing your life choices off of these people. Not a good idea, bro. Not a good idea. And so we want to be selective in the people that we allow influence into our lives. And that's what I, that's what I mean by keeping the company that you have. So if you keep the company to where the company that you keep emulates the attributes of Christ, then you a lot better, right? Because now you got people who are following after God, who have the heart to follow after God and to do the will of God or do according to what God commands them. So you have these attributes and these characteristics of a person that you want in your life as well. So we, so it's important to be selective in who influences you. Okay? You don't have to be selective in who's around you, but you do have to be selective on who influences you. And that's, that's important for young people out there. Who's influencing you? Proverbs 13, 20, it says, Whoever walks in the wise becomes wise, but the companion of fools will suffer harm. And 1 Corinthians 15, 33, do not be deceived. Bad company ruins good morals. 
the second point, true friends are sticky. Having sticky friends. Having sticky friends. Uh, how many of you have a sticky friend that no matter what you do, you can't get rid of? Even though sometimes you want to get rid of them. <laughs> Anybody? Yeah? Bad. I, it's, it's a... It's a funny thing when you have somebody who wants to be around you, but then at the same time, it kind of drains you, but then they always want to be around you. Those, those, those are some really sticky friends, but you know 100% that if you called them at, in like five minutes, they would be at your house. <laughs> and they, they'd be down to do whatever, hang out, go somewhere, whatever it may be that they would be 100% down. And, I, and I, love, I love those types of people, but it takes time to cultivate those relationships, yeah? It takes time to cultivate those relationships. I'm trying to find my notes. I'm, I'm doing my, uh, I'm going off of this one with you. And then. There it is. I need to be reminded of the story that I wanted to share. So I have it in my notes. But I remember this one time that I was, uh, I'm going to say, I was in love with this girl, okay? And this was like in, in high school, and I had like shared my feelings. I confessed my undying love for her. And then come to find out like, she, didn't, she didn't respond to those feelings and she liked somebody else, but then the other guy was a complete jerk and I was like, what's wrong with me? How come she likes this jerk guy and not me? I'm the nice one. I'm the nice one. <laughs> that, that, I don't know if you, anybody heard that term, nice guys finish last? Anybody? Raise your hand if you've heard that. Oh, a few of you. Okay, there's totally off subject, but these guys on YouTube made a music video on that parody. Super funny. You can go look it up if you want. But anyway, that's what I felt like. I felt like, how come the nice guy gets to finish last in this situation? And so I was, I was feeling all heartbroken and whatnot. And my friend Kevin, he's like, hey, come on, let's go hang out. And so he, he takes me uh, uh, out to a park and we just sit there and he like starts to encourage me and he prays with me and we worship together and we pray together and it was such an encouraging time and and it wasn't like this jump on bandwagon kind of thing it was it was genuine like god loves you even though this person didn't reciprocate your feelings know that god has somebody for you know that he loves you more than anything else and you need his love more than you need the love and affection of somebody else. And he encouraged me in that time. And I felt leaving that situation not as sad, more happy, and more encouraged in my faith with God. And he stuck with me during that time. I don't have too many like crazy moments, but that was like one of the moments that really stood out to me where I, like I needed somebody and somebody was there for me, you know? And I know we all have those moments where we needed somebody and somebody showed up. And sometimes it's the most unexpected person who shows up sometimes, right? And God works in our lives through these people because iron sharpens iron, right? When we need somebody, when we're down and out, or we're encouraged and we're happy and somebody's there with us, there's, there's an experience and a sharpening process that happens in those moments. But the sharpening happens when we choose who influences us. Amen? It, it kind of flows together. If we make good choices with the relationships in our lives, then in those moments where we need the sharpening and we need the help and we need the encouragement, then we have people who have the values to lift us up towards God. Amen? 
Proverbs 17, 17, a friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. Ecclesiastes 4 says that there are that two are better than one because they have a good uh, reward for their toil. For if they fall, one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him who is alone when he falls and has not another to lift him up. True friends are sticky. True friends are sticky. The third point is that true friends tell us the truth, even when it hurts. We want friends who are going to be honest and willing to share with us the hard truth. Pastor John does that for me all the time. He does not hold punches. He tells me when I'm an idiot. <laughs> tells me when I'm being stupid. But it's all in love. Because I, I know his heart. We've known each other for a long time. And he's helped, he's helped me through a lot of different things. And so when he sees me acting like a dummy, he's like, why are you being dumb? <laughs> But I appreciate it so much. Even though it hurts, I understand that his heart towards me is true. That he loves me enough to tell me that I'm being a dummy so that I can get out of it. I can stop thinking the way that I was thinking and I can move on and I can grow and I can become better. We, we need people in our lives that are going to do that, not people that are just going to coddle us and say, oh, you're okay, you're okay, you're okay, and never really addressing the fact that you're really not okay. You're really not. We need people who are going to be able to push past those emotions and not be afraid of how we feel and hurting us because... We need people who are going to share truth with us, even if it hurts. Proverbs 27, 6 is faithful are the wounds of a friend and profuse are the kisses of an enemy. Then rather speaking the truth in love, we are to, to give up in every way un, into him who is the head, into Christ. Grow up. Did I say give up? I said, I meant grow up. <laughs> And to speak truth in love so that we can grow into the image of Christ. And the more people we have in our lives that help speak that truth into us, the closer we are to get to God. Finally, Jesus is the ultimate friend. Jesus is the ultimate friend. I, what did I put up there? I think I said Jesus is the goat. Is it, is it up there? Or did you take it out because you didn't like it? I'm okay with that. That's fine. <laughs> you took it out. <laughs> I think I, I put Jesus is the goat, the greatest of all time friend. He does all of these things for us. He does every single one of these things. He sticks by our side no matter what. Sticks by us. He, he said that he will never leave us nor forsake us. Yeah? Not only that, but he speaks truth to us through his word. All the time, never changing, always truth, and convicts us by it. And then, he shapes our character. He shapes our character. It's important for us, it, when, when we're talking about friends, th this should be like the number one friend you want to cultivate a relationship with. Amen? Amen. The number one friend you want to create a relationship with is Jesus Christ. And if you don't have a friendship with Jesus Christ, you're missing out. You're missing out. When you, when you want to get a new friend or you want to develop a friendship or relationship with somebody, you got to spend time with the person, right? You go get coffee or you go to a go to a, a, a ball game or something and you go have dinner or lunch or breakfast and you do these things together with the person and you ask each other questions and you get to know each other and your relationship begins to grow. And then you go from strangers to acquaintances to friends to close friends and then to maybe even best friends or whatever. 
but there's a progression in the relationship that happens. And in the same way, we need to progress our relationship with Christ. That we need to take the time out of our day, take the time out of our lives in order to spend time with the Lord so that we can become good, best, close friends. Amen? How many of you can say that Jesus is your best friend? Yeah? Amen. How many of you feel like Jesus is more of a closer to acquaintance than he is best friend? You don't want to raise your hand, do you? Not? <laughs> sometimes it feels like that, though, sometimes, right? But God is always there. He's always available. He's always there because he never leaves us. He's sticky. He's sticky. He's super sticky. He never leaves. And on top of all of those things, Jesus showed us the greatest act of love, amen, by dying on the cross. I want to end, I've been, uh, I have a group with uh, some guys on Sunday afternoons, and I asked uh, one of the guys to, to share. Three weeks ago, I asked him to share, and he, he, did, he was like, no, no, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. And... I said, okay, fine. If it's not for this week, then I'm going to ask you again for when I preach <laughs> three weeks from now. And he goes, okay, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. And so I asked him again last week in preparation for this week, and he was still kind of on the fence. And then uh, this week, we got him baptized. Yeah, he got baptized, and then that day, he's, he's probably going to share a little bit about this, and then later that day, he goes, you know, about sharing, I'll share. I was like, yes! That's, that's Holy Spirit right there empowering us. Johnny, can you, can you give Johnny a hand? He's going to share about how groups chain, like really impacted him. The, our grace group really impacted him. And then how this soaping challenge really impacted him. Because like, God, God has been doing something in, in this young man right here. So give him a hand. He's going to probably read off of this. So he's nervous. So if, 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 he feel, if he's feeling nervous, just give him a little encouragement. Like, you got this. <laughs> I guess what he um, I was not going to testify, but last week, Thursday, I got baptized at KCC. So here I am standing before you. Um, everyone in here should overcome fear because we are the child of God. And I think uh, we are not enslaved to fear and we should love to share the gospel of God. Oh my God. Um, <laughs> right now, I'm going to tell you my prompt question and tell you my testimony. So the first question is, how has soap, I mean, how has small group changed my life? Well, I started going to Grace Bible five to six months ago, and I've been coming to church, going to my Grace group with Pastor Zach, Chong, Jerry, Mana, and Kainoa. And I grew exponentially with God more than before, and I guess you can also say that I matured much and the things really changed my mind towards the world because I can't really say much things towards my friends when it comes to like emotional, physical and stuff. But when I, it comes to the group, I can say much because they understand me and much. And the second question is, how has soaping affected with your walk with God? In all honesty, um, I did not read my Bible much before so, and but when we started the challenge, I actively do it every day for 30 days. It's not, oh, thank you, thank you. It's not consistent, but I did it every day. Um, I am thankful for that because if it wasn't it, I would have not known the Frappet's background or the backstory of it. And it impacted me so much during the first and second week of soap. And prayers started to happen in reality. And my miracles, miracles started to happen. And I'm going to about to share it to you guys. 
It's about my military insurance processing at Oahu. Um, ever since high school, I started wanting to go to the Navy, but um, it's not. I always fell on the task, I always get like 16 score. So when I started the soap thing, um, we are gonna read this. <laughs> okay. So the way I, wait, no, 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 that's different. So last year of December, I heard that if you score 10 to 30, 30, 10 to 30 score, you can get to the Navy, but with just one job, which is BM, boats weighing me. Um, what they do is maintenance, painting the ship. Uh, you serve in the ship, in the ocean, for like the most of your four years contract, I think. And it's not, it's not that good. It's you get yourself like dirty and you get yourself tired and it's basically a certified janitor. That's what they called it. <laughs> That's what they, I don't know. I, but the thing is, I work customer service or like fast food for like three to three, two to three years now, and I have like the experience on how to like clean. Um, mm. uh, it gets tiring from time to time, but you know it's part of the job. It is what it is. And then uh, my recruiter wanted me to like take the practice test at his office. But I did so bad that it was like four different subjects. It was math, English, science, and I don't know the other one, but it comes with three to five questions and it's like, you can take your time on it, but I got like 16, nine scores and I got like, they said it's okay, I'll just take the job, which is boat screen, which is like painting, uh, painting the ship, mopping, scrubbing, whatever. And then the way I prepared myself was for the real test is more soaping actually. That's when the miracle started to happen. Um, I wrote my opinion about it, I shared it to my group, and I barely did any studies on math and English since like I struggled on that. And for that, ooh, for that one, two weeks of soap, I did not fed myself, like I starved myself and um, I actually lost like five pounds. I went from 110 to 15. Oh, <laughs> within a week. Oh my. <laughs> I was so negative about myself. Um, I, that I would fail the actual test. And uh, where is it? Um, and then, and the, the, the real test concludes like, 10 subjects plus two more subjects for the Navy. And the question comes with 15 to 30 questions. And it's like, it's like limited time only and it's way harder and longer. So the way I prepared myself was, we, oh my God, what is this? I lost, I lost it, one second. But it was a good thing I starved myself because Pastor John once said, if you start, I mean, if you fast, you get extra brain cells. Anything I did, I got, <laughs> I think, I think I get extra brain cells. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But the day I went to like Honolulu for the actual test, the second week of soap, um, God used a light on me and those light were um, the personal driver. His name was Rodney. He's 37 years old. He served the Navy for like, 37 years ago, and the, he gave me like wise of advice, and then he said to like aim high, which like I doubted myself when doing it. And then when I went to like the military engines, there were like 20 people. They were so approachable and compassionate. They're so like they, they had so much positivity. It's a memory that I would never forget. Um, they motivated me so much to do better on the text, actual test, and miraculously, I passed with a score of 35. So, um, and so now I only have not just one job option, but multiple jobs, and I thank God for that. Yeah. Um, uh, I thank God for using those people as him, his, showing his true love. And I thank Pastor Zach too for encouraging me to come up here. And I think the I think Rodney through messages because he said to MI and then I did. I think I did. Uh, 
I was just surprised I went from 16 to 35 because I was not knowing that I would fail because I was going to get boat swim, but I barely, since I barely did any studies so math and English, uh, beside from that, I was writing um, my devotional, daily devotional to God, and so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, John. Okay, yeah, yeah, stay safe. So, like, I don't know if you caught that, yeah. but he goes, I was doing so bad that I soaped more. Yeah, I <laughs> How's that? Most people would, they'd stop soaping and they'd jump into the, the material that they need to study for. I don't know. Not Johnny. <laughs> Johnny's like, okay, I'm not even going to deal with the math. <laughs> I'm not going to deal with the English. I'm going to jump into the Bible. And God, like, doubled your score. Miraculously. <laughs> Thank you. Give him a hand. Thank you so much, Johnny. Like, if, you, if you're not in a grace group, the, he has grown so much in the grace group, and then through the soaping challenge and him jumping into, into the word, like God has really moved him and brought him to this amazing place and has done something in his life that is a miracle for him. And the, the, the opportunities for God to do those things really come in, in those areas of small group when you can rub shoulders with like-minded believers, people who love the Lord, who want the best for you, who want to encourage you, who are going to tell you the truth, who are going to stick by your side. Amen? So if you're not in a small group, I want, I want to encourage you to go find a small group, or if you want to start one, start a small group, whatever it may be, but I want you to jump in and take that step of faith if you're not already in there. Amen? And I pray for us as we, as we go. Lord, we thank you so much that you are, are the ultimate friend. We thank you that you shape our character, that you stay by our side, and that you tell us the truth through your word no matter what we're going through or how we feel. God, that your heart is always for us. It's never against us. That you want the best for us. That your plans for us are good. And that you have purposed us and predestined us for good works. And I thank you, Lord, that you have done all these things for us because you love us. And Lord, we want to honor you with our lives. We want to honor you in the, with the uh, people around us. Lord, help us to find good friends, amazing true friends that are going to stick by us, that are going to help shape our character into, into be more like you. And they're going to tell us the truth even when it hurts. God, and we thank you for the people like that who are already in our lives, and we want to honor those people. We want to say thank you for them. Thank you for the relationships that you've already placed in our lives, and if those areas are lacking, help us. Help us to find them. We ask for divine appointments for, uh, for finding these types of friends in our lives. We honor you. We bless you. We thank you for what you do. In Jesus' name, everybody said, amen, amen. Be blessed. Have a great week. Thank you.